have reached less grace with rwgresearch.com. Open dash source dash energy. Video series RWG OSD Oversized Delta. Hey, what's up, everybody? Who am I? RWGresearch.com. Anyway, that's my wife. So today we're going to be talking about the belt tensioners. Here they are in the 3D drawing. I actually did not draw these up first. I drew them up second, which you'll see in the second part of this video, since this is a two-part video, what happened when I didn't draw them first. Anyway, the most important thing I found on my other printer is getting these darn belts tight. And the way the original Roz talk is set up, it's kind of difficult. So I'm making these exactly the way I need to. Plus, I have them fit just so the belt is maximized, as I told you, which you'll see at the end of these videos. So really quickly, we're going to talk about the bearing selection. Remember all the bearings I showed you in the first couple of these videos in this series? Well, I ended up selecting this particular bearing. This bearing is just the right size in all dimensions to hold the six millimeter wide belt and it has a little bevel on the edge or a, um, a shoulder on the edge. So two of these together, I think they're three millimeters from the inside of the shoulder to the edge of the bearing. So two of these put together make a perfect rail and just the right height so that the um, belt stays in place. So you can look up the part number of these bearings, but honestly I couldn't find them. There you can see that nice lip on there or edge. So that's the bearing selection. Next, we're going to try to find a shaft. So I'm digging through all the shafts, just kind of showing you the sort of selection I have to pick from. It's kind of ridiculous, to be honest. But uh, I keep all this stuff for a purpose, and this is why. When I need something, I've got it. So these are the long shafts. The other ones were the short shafts. Um, I was originally... Oh, look at this little threaded piece. That's threaded on that aluminum block and the other part. Talk about some fine thread. Sorry, I couldn't get it in focus very well, but check that out. Anyway, from something else I took apart. So here's the selection I had right there. So I ended up sort of completely changing my mind and thinking, well, what if I could look through my parts bins? Maybe there's something in there that I could put, like cut down that's already threaded and is already round and is already centered. Um, so I really was looking through all my bins to try to find pieces like that. I know I had a bunch of stuff like that, but I had to really see what I had. So there's six millimeter inside diameter bearings. Now these little guys are really handy. I thought about turning these down and making them exactly six millimeter, and they're already threaded, so I could just you know do some fun stuff with them. But ultimately, we'll get back to exactly what I selected later. So here, um, this is basically the selection of pieces of aluminum that I had. These are the small pieces, uh, and then. There's some more small pieces. Here's the big pieces. So I'm looking for a piece of aluminum that I can cut up and make these parts out of. It had to be fairly thick because I wanted to thread it and put a set screw in it and all sorts of stuff. So I dug a while and although I have a bunch of stuff, I just couldn't find what I was looking for. Eventually, I came across this piece right here. It's pretty thick. It has holes around the outside and it also has a hole on the edge three holes on the edge which kind of is an issue so the next thing is, is how do I cut it so I ended up deciding to use the bandsaw here and I just took a block of wood I took the blade and I I made the block of wood in the blade and the piece of metal all correctly um, aligned and then taking two screws and just screwed the piece of metal down and I figured if I cut it slow it shouldn't go anywhere this is just a rough cut so I went ahead and rough cut all three of these and uh, of course this is time lapse so it's a little slower than this. So I cut two of them actually. Um, the third one I did not use because as you can see in this piece right here I actually have holes sticking out. That's because one side of this block was completely drilled through there as you can see. So that piece is junk. I can't use it because I want to drill my own holes in the right spots. So after taking a, a few measurements uh, I decided I can use these pieces, so I went ahead and cut off the ends where those holes are at, both sides. Uh, the middle piece did not have holes, so I didn't need to worry about it. So then I marked them right in the center, cut this guy right in half, and this actually gave me four pieces, so I just selected the best three pieces I needed, and uh, 
this worked out pretty good. So cutting these pieces off was pretty easy. Now we need to clean these guys up. So we're heading over to the mill. So here we are. Uh, I was in a pretty big rush when I did this, so it's kind of this is sort of done sloppy. Uh, so forgive me for my my poor quality of machining here, but I was I literally had like 40 minutes to get this all done, so I was I was rushing through it. So I took the biggest possible end mill I had at the time, and I just completely finished the surface, flipped these guys over, finished the other side. And then to finish the faces, since everything else is square, I usually do it this way. Uh, maybe there's a better method. You guys can leave me a comment, but this is the way I usually surface the edges after I have the rest of them square. Now this particular end mill actually had a, like a, some pretty bad uh, sharpened edges, whatever you call them. The, the edges on this end mill is pretty bad, so it actually didn't leave a perfect finish when I did surfacing. So actually the middle one there is actually lower but these three do not need to be perfect so next we're going to basically take the smaller end mill here I believe this was mm, three eighths no half inch probably half inch and I cut the I don't know what you'd call these the grooves that I ended up using this is where the bearing is going to be placed so in that drawing in the beginning you saw the bearing attached well this is it so I rough cut the whole thing. This is live speed here. I rough cut the whole thing and then I went back and finished the entire thing a little slower. And that gave me a slightly better finish. Um, this aluminum I really really like. I don't know what exactly type it is but it's it's not gummy aluminum. It's very flaky and it just cuts really nice. So next up here I'm gonna be cutting another section so what I did is I just used the edge of the vise, since I know it's fixed and it's not going to move and it's square with the table, I just found the edge of the vise, all right, and I used that as a reference to square up my piece using a, um, a parallel block there, a parallel shim, and I made it exactly square with the edge. This is this way I knew where the one axis was at zero, and then I went ahead because I don't know the perfect thickness of these. Um, I decided to go ahead and center the piece, but the other axis, the X there, I guess it would be, that axis was just squared off the um, the vice table. So, yes, using a center drill, I center drilled it, and then I went ahead and drilled it with the proper size. I'm going to be threading a bolt through here instead of using a shaft like I originally intended. So this is the way I do threading. I put it in the um, drill press or vice, just lightly tighten it, and I was using WD-40 here because I didn't have tap magic at the time. But I just lightly get it going, like to basically to get it started square. I usually loosen it just enough so where it slips once it gets going. Then you can take it out and it's, it's square. So this is how I usually tap holes on the lathe. I do not, or the milling, excuse me, milling machine. I do not like to power tap. I just don't trust it. So I usually start it like that and then I finish it with a hand tap. So this seemed to work pretty good. Um, that WD-40 worked fine on there. So here I'm taking measurements to just sort of see exactly uh, where I want to drill the bottom holes. So I'll explain to you the bottom holes later. But right now, the bottom holes need to be um, threaded, drilled and threaded. So using a center drill, a regular drill, then a tap, I threaded them as deep as I possibly could because I wanted to have as much um, threads inside that aluminum as I possibly could. So that's how I did those pieces. Um, they turned out really nice and so now I have to go home and work on them there. Alright so here's the blocks, the I call them blocks, I don't know what they are, things that I made. Um, and I used a quarter twenty bolt here. So the quarter, quarter twenty bolt will be fastened like this and then the two bearings one here and one there so here's the deal uh, the was it six millimeter I think these are six millimeter inside diameter and the thing about this is six millimeters actually a little sloppy does that matter no probably not but what I decided to do is go ahead and get a bolt quarter 20 happens to be the right size that it just doesn't quite fit on there so what I have to do is turn 
the threads down a tiny tiny little bit to get that to slip on there. I'm actually going to try sanding it with like a sanding stone first because I just literally need to butter those off. I think it'll slip in there pretty easy. So let's give it a go. There you go. Fits in there just peachy. I actually took way too much off there, but here it's like perfect. So I got a few extra of these. I can make sure I take my time, get it right. All right, well, that's what it looks like assembled. Um, I did not clean the edge of the aluminum. You know, like if you look closely here, you'll see that there's a lip there where the... So you can see it's sticking up very clearly right there. I actually left that there and sort of used that instead of a washer. I actually used that as my bearing edge. So there is not much tolerance in there, but listen. It's not rubbing. So, seems to work pretty good. Now, as far as this bolt being directly in the center of this is actually a fraction skewed and the reason it's like that is because I originally when I made this drill hole I originally was going to put a washer in here so maybe I should still do that so that this is centered right because it, it's kind of important alright I got the three of those done definitely took some beating on my stone this is a really weird stone this is not your normal standard type of stone and it is porous all the way through, you can use the entire thickness, but it is actually thinner and rougher on the other sides. Once you get into it, it feels pretty well the same grit, but I don't know where I picked them up. Maybe three of them I picked them up somewhere. Could have even been Harbor Freight. They are cheap though, they do break easy. Quick side note, you definitely might want to make sure you wipe everything down real good, because you get that grit in between this and this, and it's going to wear fast. Be cautious using a stone around a lathe with a bed like this or any sliding precision parts you don't want to contaminate it those are some fine dusty particles there can't get my finger around oh where you are there you are see what I'm saying focus I can't figure it out all right well that concludes this part there's a part a and a part B I really wanted to put this in two separate parts because I think all of the footage I recorded is worth watching. So hopefully you'll watch the next section. It's slightly longer, I think, but uh, it'll be finishing these blocks. And I think you'll actually really like it because I try to do something I've never done before with my milling machine. Or excuse me, with my lathe. So, all right, peace and love. See you guys later. What are you doing right now, my wife? I'm coloring. Coloring. An adult coloring book. An adult coloring book. That sounds sketchy. Octopus. She's literally coloring an octopus. <laughs> this is just wrong. <laughs> it's fun. Jeez. Okay. Peace out. Peace and love. God bless. Have a good day. Laters. <laughs> You're funny.